What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2005 Chevy Corvette. Up front is a 6.0 liter V8, and down below is a four-speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving this C6 Corvette for two reasons. First of all, it's the very first model year of the C6. The C5 ended in 2004, and of course the C6 picked up where it left off in 05, but there's a lot of carryover equipment in here that didn't last the full run of the C6, and I'm curious to see if you guys are able to pick up what is left over from the C5 generation. The second reason is the fact that I've driven the Z06 from this generation, and I've driven the ZR1 of this generation. My Corvette knowledge is strong with this C6, but I've never driven the base model, I've never driven an automatic one, and so let's see what a more volume seller Corvette really looked like. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. And huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their C6 Corvette. You'll hear more about them towards the end of the video. But if you'd like to browse their inventory, check the link in the description below. But let's get back to that 6-liter V8. Well, it's not a schlub, even though it is a base model. This makes 400 horsepower flat which is a very good and healthy number for any automobile. And something I've always admired about the Corvette is that since its conception in 1953, the first early cars, you could get a six cylinder, but after that, they never strayed away from the V8. Even when the oil crisis came and went and emissions were cracked down on and things got real, they never downsized to a V6 or went turbo four or anything like that. They've always stayed true and I appreciate that very much. Now, this is the lowest horsepower C6 that you can find. This being the LS2, they later upgraded to the LS3, and of course the LS9 and engines like that, and so you could get a lot more power out of a lot of other C6s, but I still think that 400 is good. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed automatic transmission. Now, starting the next model year in 06, you could find a six-speed automatic as an option, but for the first year of 05, it was just the four speed and it is tired it is not up to the task it's not very happy you could tell it's very dated i shouldn't say tired because there's nothing functionally wrong with the transmission it's just a very dated older style transmission really from the 90s and so yeah last but not least of course the corvette is rear wheel drive as pretty much all corvettes have been there's talks of a hybrid all-wheel drive maybe something for the c8 but for now in this generation only rear wheel drive how does it feel to drive an automatic base model corvette well i actually don't dislike it as much as i thought i would it makes the car more of a cruiser oriented car than a sport oriented car and sometimes that's what people are looking for it still has that punchy six liter up front like i said 400 horsepower and corvettes to me have always felt like a sled it's kind of a put your foot down and hold on type vehicle. And that still applies here in the automatic base model. It's just a little bit more relaxed. Do I miss shifting? Not really. Corvette shifters have always been very stiff and unforgiving and unfriendly. So honestly, cruising here on a Thursday morning, I don't mind it. It's fine. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have six gauges. Off to the left is my coolant temperature and oil pressure. In the center, we'll have the speedometer and tachometer. And off to the right, we have battery voltage and fuel. Surrounding the gauge cluster, we do have our mode page, selector, plus and minus button. And off to the right, we have our fuel information, our gauges, so we can look at some digital gauges, trip odometer, option, and reset. Very, very interesting to see all of that. And we do have a head-up display above the gauge cluster, which definitely looks and feels pulled over from the C5. The steering wheel is a weird middle ground steering wheel. It looks sort of late 90s and later C6s. They did adapt to the more globally used 
steering wheel. So definitely interesting to see that. Off to the left, we do have a climate control vent and the gauge dimmer switch, as well as our fuel door release and trunk release down below. And moving on to the door, we have our lock and unlock, two levels of memory seats, power mirrors, and power windows. We also have this little button down below. This is your door handle. So the C6 Corvette was the first Corvette to have electronic door handles. I don't love this. I don't like relying on electronics to get out of a vehicle, but there is a safety latch, but I just don't see much of a point. Moving into the center, we have two climate control vents surrounding a hazard switch, an aftermarket radio, because most radios from the mid 2000s can't keep up with modern tech. And down below, we do have dual zone climate, which is a little unnecessary for a vehicle this small, but that's okay. Happy to see it either way. Auto, rear defrost, front defrost, things like that. And we do have heated seats. The heated seats work in a very interesting way, contrary to how most heated seats work. So you hit it once and it's red. You hit it a second time and it's orange, which is less heat. Red is maximum heat, orange is lower heat. But then to turn it off is a separate circle button down below it. Very, very weird how that works, but that's how Chevy decided to do it in 05. Between those two buttons, we do get a little ashtray and cigarette lighter. And moving in the center console, we have the shifter off to the left. So clearly, a parts bin part from the previous generation Corvette. I have driven a C5 in automatic. Take a look at that shifter. Take a look at this shifter. Yeah, no, uh, no hiding that. Down below, we see another C5 because the traction button is the same as it was in the C5 and it depicts a C5 on it. I mean, they didn't even try to change it to the C6. I mean, what's the point? If it works, it works, I guess. Off to the right, however, we do have openable cup holders. We'll do a big freaking bottle test, but I don't even think these can hold a Red Bull can, and so they fail immediately. Then we do have a little light for the passenger airbag. Pretty interesting. In this giant center console, we have a 12 volt outlet in there. It's not very deep, but it is like length and width wide. Uh, it's interesting. And then we'll talk about the seats. The driver's seat is power, memory, and heated, and they are pretty comfortable. Again, sort of reinforcing that cruiser mentality as opposed to a hardcore sports car. The Z06 and the ZR1 are definitely more aggressive in the seats. If that's what you're looking for, you can either swap them in or just buy a Z06 or ZR1. I know it's easier said than done, but you know, those are your options. We don't have any back seats, thank God, but we do have a rear trunk. So let's hop out and take a look at the cargo space. Right around the back of the C6 Corvette. I've already electronically popped it from inside and pulling it up. These are not the original floor mats. Obviously, this is not a Z06. Some previous owner just put them in here. I also do get this privacy cover, but uh, it's not the thickest of material. Overall, I've never loved or hated the rear cargo space of a Corvette. It's very low and flat, but it doesn't go very deep. We have some pouches back here. These actually go really deep, which is really nice to see, but they're kind of awkward sized. And so I'm not really sure what I would put in there. But overall, that is the rear trunk space of a C6 Corvette. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And honestly, I kind of dig the look of the C6. I think it's pretty iconic. And for a modern Corvette, I think it has the right angles. It's so clearly a Corvette. It kind of looks like the C4. It kind of looks like the C5. It kind of looks like the C7. The C8 is in its own whatever. But you could tell, like, it's very, like, Corvette. You know, it's like that old story of how Charlie Chaplin came in third in a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. Sometimes it's more than just looking like something, it's the essence of something. And so this really has the essence of every Corvette, and I like that a lot. It should also be noted for the exterior that this is a removable piece. And so I'll show a shot of it here without this piece. Very, very cool that Chevy did this so you can have a target top or a hard top depending on what you want. And when you come inside here, it's actually like see-through. So very, very cool. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving an automatic base model, first model year Corvette C6? Well, it's fine. I don't overly love it. I don't overly hate it. Here's the honest truth. I'm not a big Corvette fan just at all in my life because I think it's kind of an easy answer. When Corvettes debuted, it took a little while for people to realize how good they were. But once people learned how good a Corvette is and with all of the history that gave one to each of the astronauts, 
They've always had a V8, even through the oil crisis, blah, blah, blah. They've become more and more mainstream to where pretty much anyone who's anyone with a couple of bucks can afford to drive and own a Corvette in some capacity. And while that's great, I'm happy to see a good quality car getting mainstream attention. Mainstream attention often leads to the death of uniqueness. And so every time I see a Corvette at a car show or at a meetup, I just kind of look past it because there's so many of them. And that's where that meme comes from of the car show people that are like, oh, it's one of six red ones made on a Tuesday in the month of March. They want to make their cars special and unique, but these cars are so mass produced down in Bowling Green, Kentucky, that they're not that special anymore. But that shouldn't take away from the fact that they're good. This is the peanut butter and jelly of cars. Yeah, every kid brings it for lunch, at least when I was growing up in the late 90s, early 2000s, but it was a solid meal. I still eat peanut butter and jelly to this day. It's delicious. It works. It's solid. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into when I make myself a PB&J. That's what the C6 and what all Corvettes have always been. They're not necessarily always groundbreaking cars, although they tried with the C7 and the Corvette R's for the racing series are wonderful and cool and all that stuff. But it's a working formula that they've used for the last 50 years. And so am I wowed by the C6? No, but can I respect it? Do I enjoy the drive? Most absolutely. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their C6. I was very excited to get behind the wheel. I like driving base model versions of well-known cars, and so this is most certainly one of them. North Naperville Autos is fantastic. They have a wonderful inventory. Please go check them out with the link in the description below. If you are not in the Chicagoland area, don't worry because they ship, they offer financing. So anywhere in the lower 48, you can get a car from North Naperville Autos. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.